Larry Gallagher and J.P. Bryce on ICTV. Today we're going to be discussing coaching and the qualities that make a great coach. So we've got Mr. Marty Gallagher here. He's been a coach for many, many years. Um, mm-hmm. Marty, just for the record, and for those that may not really know who you are yet, and I find that in Well, you know, you'd have to be in my world. My world is uh, uh, hardcore powerlifting back primarily in the 70s, 80s, 90s, up, I guess, through the year 2000. But uh, that's a very small sliver of the, you know, the athletic universe. But within that universe, I worked with the best of the best, you know, uh, starting with, uh, I mentored under, you know, world champion Hugh Cassidy, and uh, <clears throat> I myself, I didn't really get into serious coaching JP until I sustained my, I had a, a bad injury in 1983. I, I uh, had a compound fracture of my left lower leg, and so that was kind of, that was kind of, I was 33 at the time. That was kind of the end of my um, competitive career. So at that point, it's like, well, how do I stay in the game? You know, because I'm not going to be lifting, you know, at at the elite level for a while. So, I, you know, I got into coaching and I uh, started with Mark Chalet. You know, Mark was a neighborhood guy. Uh, him and Mark Dimadoff, they were the power players in, in my neighborhood. And, you know, I helped Mark. Uh, we worked together for six years. <clears throat> and Mark was my entree into the, you know, to the big leagues of national level American powerlifting. And uh, from there, you know, I, I ended up going with Black's gym. They, they asked me to coach for them. And as a team, we won uh, five team titles in three years. Uh, well, actually, we won in two different, fe- it was two different federations, uh, five team titles in three years. Um, but I worked with, you know, who's who, if you know, that small splinter world of powerlifting, I worked with, man, I worked with some immortal people. You know, I worked with uh, Lamar Gant, you know, know, the greatest deadlifter ever. I worked with Dan Austin, who, in addition to, you know, setting world records at 148 and 165, Danny was also, you know, the best lifter at the IPF World Championships. And, you know, couple different occasions. Uh, I coached Danny Danny twice. These as a competition coach. You need to make a difference between being a competition coach and being a personal coach. A personal coach you're usually well in the old days you had to be in the neighborhood. Right? Nowadays, and that's kind of where we're kind of looping around to, you can you can be a remote coach and still fulfill the prime coaching obligations, I'd say within 90%. So I coached Lamar, coached, uh, of course, Mark, um, you know, Mark broke world records in the deadlift. Who else? Um, Kirk, yeah, how can you forget Kirk, right? Uh, I worked with Mike Hall, the great American super heavyweight lifter. who else? I mean, just, uh, you know, Dave, uh, Dave Jacoby. I uh, coached the United States at the 1991 World Championships. We won. Uh, we were the world team champions. I coached six lifters in two days in Oribro, Sweden. Uh, you know, and uh, that's as a competition coach, as a, as a personal coach, which, I, you know, really is where you make your bones. You know, uh, our our people m- make gains, and that is really the the criterion for uh, success successful coaching. Well, and you forgot. I mean, you forgot to mention. Oh, Eddie Cohn. Okay. <laughs> Eddie Cohn. That's right. Competition coach down the cherry on top, right? 
yeah, yeah, the that was the high point. I mean, I love coaching Kirk, but Kirk was such a steamroller. He was almost anticlimactic. Um, but you know, I think probably the high points of my coaching career were uh, I was Cone's competition coach when he had his two best performances when he totaled 2400 at 220, which was incredible. That was mind blowing. Uh, and then when he broke the all time total record at 242. Um, so I was uh, privileged to be, you know, like it's, uh, being a competition coach is like similar to being like a, a NASCAR pit crew chief. You know what I mean? You got a squad of guys under your direction and you're at the national or the world championships and your job is to deliver this premier lifter on stage, on time, you know, warmed up properly, not too early, not too rushed, you know, right, boom, you deliver them perfect, then you've done your job. Um, we were very, very good at that. that your students get results. <laughs> you know, exactly. You know, man, I mean, that, it all comes down to that. Your people either get results from your methodologies and protocols or they don't, and then you disappear as a coach, okay? Um, but, I mean, there's more to it than that. No, it's not. It is really that elemental. You How do you get What's the goal? What's the format? What's the benchmark? What, what do we... You have to define the goal. What's the goal? What's the goal? Muscle size and strength? Okay. Well, if it's muscle size and strength, then you've got to, uh, as a coach, uh, you've got to guide your athlete through some hardcore high intensity progressive resistance training backed up with some power nutrition i throw in some cardio just to keep weight gains lean right mm -hmm. and you adhere to that but it's the the devil's in the devil's in the detail it's the adherence there's a lot of good coaching out there there's not as much good adherence Well, I don't, I don't deal with the um, unmotivated, right? I, I can't. Uh, I, if, if I have a highly motivated individual, I can write a prescription that will obtain them results. And they can be, you know, afflicted or exalted. You know what I mean? It can be the, the, in the deepest physical hole or they can be a world-class athlete. Doesn't matter. If, if they are motivated and stagnant uh, and if they're interested in my particular area of expertise, then I can help them. And usually I take them back to ultra basics. Right. Right. I, you know, I think, I think passion plays a big part of it too. I mean, Absolutely. JP, it's just it's just a wit it's just a widget. It could be coat hangers. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's well, just product. It's just product. Well, if you're a passionate guy about fitness, you that's, use the that's equipment. different. Well, that's you're different. Gonna a, you're gonna be a much better fitness equipment salesman. So I would think the same thing goes to coaching. This goes for you. This goes back to the '60s when you were a kid and you yep. came. 
came right. up this was your life well and I had I had good coaching you had good coaching so I had good role models right I had good uh, yeah I I knew what good coaching looked smelt and felt like you know what I mean I, I you know uh, yeah. it, invaluable how lucky was I No, they want uh, they wanted me to coach them because I got results for them. And you got results, yeah. That's all that ma that's all that matters. Nothing else matters. You either do or you don't. And you can't get results for everybody. Uh, right. And that but, passion drove you to get those results, to, to become the lifter that you were a, a good lifter back in the day too. I'm yeah, sure I was, injured, right? yeah, I was I was good, but I I was never gonna be Great. I, I didn't have the um, body weight to height ratio. Right. Uh, I knew I was never going to be a, a world world class lifter. The first time I went to my na the my first national championships, all the super heavyweights are my height. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. And they're all weighing three hundred to three twenty, and I'm like, no, nah, there's no way I'm ever going to be able to get that dense. Can't do it. Just doesn't have it in me. Well, we, we, you know, we all have different limitations Correct. physically and even mentally and all that, but the, the important thing is you take your genetics and your mentality to the max. You, you, you be the best you that you can be, and that's what you've done. That's what I've done. That's what a lot of guys have done. Yeah, a lot of guys have done, but that doesn't necessarily mean they can coach. Well, that's exactly right. I mean... Oh, why is that? You know, Uh, because they're not necessarily good communicators. A lot of times, so much of what they do is intuitive. Uh, right? I mean, um, I had to riddle everything. I was, um, I was a physiological overachiever. Right? I, I, I had to think harder and be smarter in order to make my gains. So many guys I lifted against, they had great bodies. They were just born with these giant, perfect, thick, well, like you have, sir, I might add. Uh, J.P. Bryce has one of those bodies. Just born like a, like a gorilla. I mean, you've got the thick bones. What are your wrists? Eight inches, right? No, I don't know. I, oh, I yeah, don't yeah, know. yeah, 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 they are. No, but you know what? I started out as a very skinny guy. I mean... Well, somewhere along the line, something happened. <laughs> oh, I, look, I had a lot of motivation. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. was actually bullied as a kid. Yeah, well, I imagine and, that, that all changed. And, uh, you know, I took that and I made, I made something out of it. I, I made that a motivator in my life that, you know, I was going to make, make uh, lemonade out of these lemons and I was going to kick ass and get stronger and bigger than everything. Everybody's everybody everybody has some yeah. uh, tipping tipping point experience. Yeah, that's right. Or 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 you shrink from it. Well, you can if you if you crawl up in a ball and go in the corner. And now you go to the, your mother's basement and you know become a you know. Get in, get get into vir virtual world, right? So why, why else don't athletes uh, necessarily make good coaches? What are the reasons? Well, uh, a lot of the really really good athletes didn't have to work that hard to get as good as they really really were, because they were that genetically gifted. It's not just having the body; it's also having the the reflexes and the, the central nervous system, the reaction time, that is, uh, you know, that's, that's as much a gift as being born seven foot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just as, you know, there's a, 
an unfortunate number of people that are born handicapped, there are also uh, an equal and opposite number of people that are born, you know, uh, genetically blessed. And if they are able in their society to find, to match up with the sport that, you know, matches their gifts, then you have a world beater. Right? Then you have a Jim Brown or a Bo Jackson or a Will Chamberlain, um, you know, guys that just completely blow everybody's mind and reset everybody's idea about what's possible. And they come along every, every once in a while, but uh, in so many societies, they never find the right sport. It, it's bad news if you're a football player born in Russia, you know. Because they don't have, uh, the Russians don't have, I mean, they don't even have, I don't even think they have rugby, you know, um, for whatever reason, it never got traction there. So if you're a big, powerful guy, basically you're sort of stuck with either field events, discus, uh, shot put, what else? Uh, you can be a wrestler, uh, or you can be a weightlifter. But you're not going to be a football player. You're not going to be a rugby player, right? You're certainly not going to be a baseball player. So it, it's society, so much, there's a genetic crapshoot about where you are born. Uh, and even you might have a high skill set, but if you, your skill set, if you don't find the sport or the uh, athletic undertaking that matches those skills, you'll never attain your true greatness. Like, like Michael Jordan was the greatest basketball player, but a so-so baseball player, right? What if, what if he'd never played basketball? These are kind of the, these are the things I think about. Uh, when it, but, but when it comes to coaching, it's important that when you do come across somebody, if they are athletically minded, try, you know, you can help match them up with a sport that they have some possibility of excelling at, right? It's no sense for tall guys to become power lifters or short guys to become swimmers. Right. Okay. Right? What's that? If, if someone's trying to find a coach, uh, whether it be for weightlifting or, you know, uh, the sports performance, performance coach or CrossFit coach or, or whatever, There really is only three. Uh, do they have heavyweight academic credentials? Do they have heavyweight athletic credentials? Or do they have heavyweight coaching credentials, right? Now, optimally, you have them all. You have academic credentials, you yourself were a good athlete, and you've coached and you've demonstrated an ability to replicate good athletes. That's the optimal. But at very least, expect from your coaches either some sort of outstanding, applicable athletic excellence, uh, obviously athletic excellence, uh, I'm sorry, academic excellence, athletic excellence, uh, or coaching excellence, if they have a demonstrated record, if they, they churn out, you know, uh, uh, regional, state, local, and national champions. Hey, that's a, you know, that's a good indicator. And the good coaches put their, uh, they're proud of their credentials, they're proud of their students, right? Right. Yeah, that's what you want to see. You want to see that the coaches actually produce some, some world beaters, or at least some you know, good regional athletes, right? Right. And I mean, I think that's why, absolutely why you've been so successful. You've got tons of credentials dating way back. And, you know, that's why you're currently used by um, uh, Tier 1 Spec Ops and a bunch of other uh, branches of the government. So. Yep. But again, it's, it's, it's all result-oriented. I mean, you know, it's a cost-balance ratio. 
Uh, many are given the audition, few are given the callback, right? And fewer right. still last for a decade, which which is what I have, you know. And and why is that? At that level, the only thing that they care about is results. That's it. Nothing personal, you know. You're a great guy. We like to hang out yeah. with you and everything. But if you don't get us results, we need to rotate through to somebody else who can. I consistently yeah, get I consistently get results because I consistently refer elite athletes back to the ultra basics. Okay, they yeah. they always want to skip ahead. They always are in the next thing, the newest thing, the. The everything's revolutionary and sweep away everything that's come before, and I'm just come along behind, going, "Hey, you know, after you've uh, burned through that stuff, you might want to check back with this." You know, and it's a message that never goes out of um, never goes out of style. adventurous spirit. I say try out that new stuff, but always know that when it burns out or slows down, you know, come back home, you know, to grandma's house, you know what I mean? I mean, that, that's, yeah. that's your touch I mean, point. there are some decent things that come uh, along that do work, but boy, there's a, there's a small percentage of it. Absolutely. And I am always on the lookout for for new ways of improvement. Always. Yeah. You know, that's the difference between a scientist and a fundamentalist. Scientist right. embraces change, a fundamentalist has, stakes out a position and says everything other than that position is heresy and uh, we cannot even entertain it. That's, that's not the way we are. Show us a better way, I'll be happy to steal it. It's about it's about eight, it's it's about eighty five percent of the way there. I mean, optimally, it'd be best if I could be there with the individual, right? Yeah. But short of that, uh, having their phone record the limit efforts within the training session, whatever those efforts might be, uh, that's invaluable for me sitting whatever. Uh, I have clients in Europe and I have clients in California on, you know, totally different time zones, but they're able to, to share with me their all out efforts in their, their most recent training session. And I'm able to look at these and, and I can give a good technical assessment because I have told them exactly where to place that phone to capture the perfect angle that I as the coach need in order to make uh, you know the requisite technical adjustments. I can tell the tempo, I can tell the degree of difficulty, I can tell the technique, I can tell so much from the visual. Then I match that up with what they tell me and that takes two forms. They tell me in an email immediately after it happens and then once a week we talk by phone. So when okay. when I, this I is can something, this is something you kind of started back in uh, the nineties with with Kirk Karlowski. Oh, yeah. You said you said hey go get a, a video camera yeah. and we're going to videotape all your lifts and then review them after. Right. Right. And, and yeah, you know, it makes sense. I mean you you know I mean what do you do when you can't be there? How do you I mean. Every, this is a visual art, as is, right. I mean, how, how can you coach technique if you can't see it? What are they going to send you, still photographs? I mean, come on. 
right? So this, this tool has made it uh, possible. And again, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to get too deep in this because I really think we have another full show dedicated to this. I think we've kind of brought it up to this point where we're talking about the reality of being able to do uh, genuinely beneficial remote coaching. This, the, the medium that we're using now, these mini computers that we call phones, it's incredible. And it, it can put me in the gym with the athlete. Now, is it the same as if I'm actually there? No. It's not, but it's, it's, like I said, to me, it's 85%. Well, you know, do you think this sort of thing would be uh, a, a good supplemental type thing? Like, for example, you know, you've, maybe you've got a regular coach that you go in and see a couple times a week, and then perhaps you get on with Marty Gallagher for a half uh, hour. I don't know, man. I think that's a week. mixed message. I think you, need, you, to, I think you need to commit to a direction. We got a philosophy here. Our, our stuff works. It's a comprehensive thing. We talk to our people about resistance training, cardio, nutrition, and the psychological aspects as it, re as it relates to the transformational process. Uh, it's You can't just tone in on one thing and expect the dramatic radical results that everybody wants. Everybody wants the dramatic results, but they don't understand that it's a completely comprehensive thing. It's not just oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing concentration curls, <laughs> you know, like that's gonna, you know, change the course of the universe. No, you have to change the course of your life, right? You have to have a sophisticated nutritional program. Uh, interwoven with a sophisticated resistance training program, a sophisticated cardio program. They all have to meld. They can't clash. In addition, you've got this psychological thing going on at the same time. This is highly nuanced, and you really need a damn coach because you can understand all the pieces, but there's an ebb and flow that requires in-flight tweaking, and that's what they all miss. And that's like we guide them through that, right? And it, anyway, so it's, it's not just tab A slot B, you know what I mean? There's a, you know your, you know your client, you understand your, the person, you understand their psychology, you understand what motivates them, you understand their strong points, you understand their weak points, and you're, Based on all that, you're able to make really intelligent in-flight corrections, which have to be made to keep the progress ball moving. Right. Right. Yeah, you've really got to be all in. You've got to attack it from all areas, like you said. It's not just the lifting. A huge part of it is the nutrition. Right. And, um, and all that. I had the pleasure back in the 90s when I worked for uh, American Sports Network to, to have lunch with Mr. Lee Haney and his wife, and we were doing a, a twin lab. She was doing uh, some some videos for twin labs vitamins, and I was able to sit down with him as a 19-year-old and have lunch with him and his wife and just kind of talk, and this was a big thrill for me, you know, and he, I remember him saying, you know, nutrition is just such a huge part of this. I forget what percentage he gave it, like 70 or 80 percent, you know, it was a big so that always kind of stuck with me. But man, you got to be all in on this if you want to be a uh, give it a serious go and be a a uh, any sort of a, a an elite, especially an elite athlete. Boy, with all the, the competition out there nowadays, those guys that are that are doing well out there, man, they've got this dialed in. It's like their job. Mm -hmm. So yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, yes. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about your weekly column. So anybody wanting to, to uh, check out Marty's weekly column and this podcast and a lot of others, they can check out Raw with Marty Gallagher at ironcompany.com. You can also check out Marty's books, Purposeful Primitive and Strong Medicine. They can be purchased at Iron Company as well. Um, Marty and as well as Kurt Kowalski.
Roger that. Thank you. All right. Thank you.